the oh there we go well set. Okay. so it sounds like we're live um would you like us to start with the introductions or does the uh does the city team want to start no no you, you guys can go ahead then we can jump in okay um, so hi, I'm Ashley Lai. I'm a vice president at ACARAF, and we are the, the primes and leading the development of the affordable housing plan. I am joined by my colleagues at ACARAF, uh, Corey Block and Aaron Werner, as well as our partners, um, Kevin Dorka and Tiffany Suzula. Um, I think we have a lot of faces on the screen that I haven't met yet. So I think it would be great if we could go around and if everyone could just introduce themselves. Um, we could start with my team, uh, Aaron. Hey everybody, this is Aaron Werner. I'm a senior technical director with AKRF. Um, I'll be project manager on the AKRF side, working with Ashley and Corey. Corey? Hi, I'm Corey Block. I'm a senior planner with AKRF. So nice to meet you all. Kevin? Hi, Kevin Dworka. I'm a land use and economic consultant, and I'll be working on the needs assessment for the project with my partner, Tiffany Zazula. And I'm Tiffany Zazula. I'm a deputy director at uh, and work with Kevin Dworka. I'll be uh, helping lead the community engagement effort uh, for the housing needs assessment. Okay, and I'm going, what I can do is just, um, because I don't know if everybody's boxes line up the same as my boxes on the screen. So I'll just call out a name and then you guys can just introduce yourself. That might be the easiest. Um, so again, mine's Steve Klepp and I'm with planning and zoning. Um, Michelle, you want to go? We have two sure. Michelle. On the city side, I'm the Michelle, um, senior planner, planning and zoning. Um, Chuck Berman? Um, uh I was the Northeast partner for Trammell Crow Residential. I founded the REAP called Avalon, Avalon Bay Communities. Um, I currently build apartments in the Northeast, primarily under the name of Bedrock. And I met Steve uh, because I created the affordable housing law in the state of Connecticut. I was the test case for it in Trumbull, Connecticut. And after New Canaan asked me to do something, I ended up in a 10 year lawsuit with them, um, which ended up in the old mill house stuff, all getting redeveloped from 12 units into 100. And so why the hell Steve called me to get involved in this, I'm not sure, but I enjoyed working with him. And I love creating affordable housing and wish I could help do more. Okay. Nicole? You have two, I think. One. Either one? Uh, yeah, you can go. I'm sorry. There's more than okay. one. Okay. Hi, I'm Nicole Eady, Norwalk resident. Thank you. Um, Sonia? Hi, I'm Sonia Oliver. I'm a resident and homeowner in Norwalk. I'm also the, the chairperson of the District B um, Democrat Committee. I don't know if that's relevant, but I am. <laughs> and I also sit on the Fair Rent Commission for Norwalk. Great. Greg? Yes, good afternoon. I'm Greg Burnett. I'm the uh, president of the Norwalk Common Council or City Council and uh, passionate about Norwalk making a difference in the space of affordable housing. Nick? Uh, hi, Nick Kenner, Vice Chair on the Planning and Zoning Commission. And Adam? Adam Bovilski, Executive Director of the Norwalk Housing Authority. Okay, and the other Michelle. I'm Michelle Condorino. I'm the Executive Director of Open Doors here in Norwalk, uh, which is a um, homeless service, homeless prevention, and uh, housing uh, organization. And Nicole, the other Nicole. Good afternoon, my name is Nicole Lears. I am a common council member here in the city of Norwalk. I'm also the chairperson of the um, ad hoc affordable housing committee for the common council. Anna? Hi, I'm Anna Tabashnik and I'm an alternate commissioner on the planning and zoning commission. 
Okay, and we have a few people that are just called in as well. So I'm going to just call them out. Um, I see, hi, uh, Brenda, you popped on. So why don't you go ahead? You're muted though, Brenda. Oh, sorry about that. Brenda Penn Williams, the chairman, the chairperson of NOG Housing Authority, the president of the NOG NAACP. I am also on Fair Rent. And I have a list that goes on and on and on. And I am very passionate about affordable housing in Norwalk. Brian Badoli. Hey, everyone. Uh, this is Brian Badoli. I'm the executive director for Norwalk Redevelopment Agency. I saw Darlene's name, too. Hi, uh, I'm, I'm Darlene Young. I'm on the Common Council. and. Um, just wanted to listen in. And I, Jess, I think I saw, were you on there, Jess? I am. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Jess Bonashek here, Chief of Economic and Community Development for the city. Oh, and I see uh, Harlan Stone has joined us too, if you don't mind just introducing yourself. My pleasure. Yes, I'm Harlan Stone. I'm the CEO of HMTX Industries, headquartered here in Norwalk, Connecticut. I'm also a resident of New Canaan and uh, a strong advocate for affordable housing and a um, employer and a philanthropist in the city. Are you Jonathan's brother? Uh, Jonathan Stone is not my brother, but okay. I, have a, I have a Jonathan I didn't that works think you look like the Harlan that I knew, but I knew Harlan Stone. There is another Harlan Stone with right. Nick and heritage. Yes, he's the same yes. age as me, but I'm better looking. Yeah, you are. <laughs> you have more hair too. Significantly, significantly. Yeah. Did I miss anybody? No. Okay. This is a big group, and a lot of times we don't go in that direction a big, big group, but considering the importance and kind of the way that this study touches a lot of different areas, we've kind of felt that it was probably better to have um, more input than less input. And that way, I think it'll give the study, whatever the outcomes and, and recommendations are, it'll give it a little more teeth at the end of the day. So I think that's that'll serve us well in the long term. Um, if anybody other, other, unless anybody has any questions, we'll probably turn it over to Ashley to, um, and her team to kind of walk us through um, what they've been doing, what they're going to do, and what they need from you guys. Sure. Um, so thank you all for joining this committee. Um, we are looking forward to working with you as we go through the development of the plan. Uh, as Jess, or sorry, as um, Kevin and Tiffany will will speak to a little bit more, we will be looking to this group to help inform our community outreach programming, uh, making sure that we're involving the right people, that we're, we're engaging fully within the community and we're getting to the voices that need to be heard. Um, in terms of the, uh, what we've done so far is we've spent the summer going through your existing zoning code, some of the proposed zoning provisions. We've started pulling some, some background data. And we've been assembling that. So when this uh, committee was assembled, we'd be able to hit the ground running uh, we've also developed a, a draft outline for the community engagement plan, which, which Kevin and Tiffany will speak to, as well as a, a schedule to take us through the adoption of the plan. Um, so with that, I think I'll turn it over to, to Kevin and Tiffany. Okay, great. Thanks, everyone. It's uh, exciting to start this project. And our goal uh, will be to generate the housing needs assessment. That's the first part of this scope of work, which will be the record of the types of housing that are needed by the community, all segments of the community at a wide cross section, including affordable, very affordable market rate units, units that are subsidized, different programs of assistance, different, the widest cross section of economic and, and racial groups and and really trying to create a composite record of what the needs are. The purpose of this assessment is to provide AKRF with the tool that they will then need to then move forward in developing policies and formulating them as part of the overall policy framework and, and implementation plan aspect of this. So our role, myself and Tiffany's, is early on and, and geared toward more of the 
existing conditions and needs rather than formulating the policies. There's two poles, if you will, to the needs assessment. One of them is the quantitative analysis, and the other is the community engagement process. And Tiffany and I have worked for many, many years jointly on, on housing needs assessments, and we sort of see this as an opportunity to synthesize both. There are ways in which data is very helpful in terms of defining community needs, and there's also limitations to that data, and there's ways in which outreach to the community and listening to residents and listening to stakeholders is invaluable in terms of collecting a cross-section of stories about the experiences that your residents have with housing, the search for housing, and yet it is also not statistically reliable. So what Tiffany and I are going to do is bring these two different pieces of information together into an integrated uh, documentation of what housing needs are. You've received our scope of work, um, which includes both pieces of it. And, you know, I won't necessarily bore you with all of the minutia, but I'll just sort of give you a top level digest of what's included within that scope of work. On the data collection side, which I'll be leading, there will be a robust collection of data from the US Census, drawing upon a combination of both decennial and American community survey data. Uh, we'll be looking at that data source for demographic information and also information on housing inventory and age and price points and We'll be examining that data primarily at the top city level, but as our first step, we're also, you know, it's it's beyond our ability to totally disaggregate uh, all of the data collection into all of the different census tracts with Norwalk, but we'll try where it makes sense to drill down a little bit more so that we can better understand some of the variation geographically within the city. And similarly, we're also going to try with the data attributes to look at how certain ones, you know, in inclusive of demographics as well as housing conditions have varied over time, like what has been the story over the last 10, 20 years. The census is not the only data source. Uh, we prepared a large table that lists all the different types of attributes that would be included in our uh, compilation of information for the housing inventory and for housing conditions and values. But we're going to be drawing upon a variety of other sources besides that, including data from the city, from your building department, from your assessor to get evaluation data. Um, you know, we'll be looking at data from uh, uh, proprietary real estate sources, multiple listing services really trying to get a sense, not just what has been the historical price points of housing, but what happens when someone is actively searching for housing now on the market, what that inventory looks like for both for rentals and, and for sales. And here's where the intersection comes a bit with the engagement process. We'll also be doing interviews, stakeholder interviews with folks such as yourselves, uh, with real estate brokers, with developers, uh, both individually and in roundtable format to try and gather even more intelligence about housing needs from the widest cross-section of folks that we can. That's the data collection part, which includes some conversation and, and outreach. But then there's also the community outreach approach, right? Where we go a little bit deeper and we try and find out more about what are residents really experiencing in their search for housing? Um, what challenges are they facing? Um, how does a limited inventory or how do rising housing prices um, affect their ability to age in place, to grow a family? Um, are they experiencing discrimination in the housing market, whether in the search for housing or in the transactional process? Uh, what experiences are residents having in terms of the quality of housing, the age of housing? Um, the density of housing, right? And so to get at what the community's needs are in their own words, in their own experiences, there'll be also 
as part of the housing needs assessment, a robust engagement process. And that too is all kind of spelled out in your scope of work um, that we provided you. But just to sort of give you some top level highlights about it, uh, we'll be we'll be directly collecting information uh, from residents um, through a number of means. Uh, one, just simply by contacting organizations and having us them help us connect to residents. We'll be hosting a community needs forum that will be um, live and in person, but probably we'll also have like a online version of it too, where we can capture a greater variety of people. Um, who may not be able to attend a meeting and, you know, and, and that's especially important in terms of getting a, a, a diversity of residents to participate. We'll be doing a survey, a multilingual survey that would be distributed broadly. Uh, you know, we'd work with um, property managers and the housing authority, um, uh, neighborhood groups to get a survey out to really gauge what residents are feeling and thinking and experiencing. And so all of that information, all of which would be promoted robustly through a variety of, of outreach efforts, both um, in person and also through um, social media, uh, would be aimed at enriching a record or quantitative record of community needs assessment with qualitative information that we're collecting from a wide cross section of residents. And so Tiffany will be taking, you know, her pieces. I'll be taking my pieces. And, you know, she and I will be coming together to generate the housing needs assessment. That that is sort of, you know, where our technical and our community engagement uh contributions to the project um start start the project. You know, it's the beginning stages. And it's also in a way where our part of the project ends and we then, you know, provide that tool to, to AKRF to then use those findings as they construct policy and, and determine pathways forward and then continue the engagement process, uh, uh, you know, through their initiative by collecting input from the community on those recommendations. Any questions on the analytical process, the inclusion of information, questions for Tiffany about the maybe the particularities of her her approach to engagement during the housing needs um, piece. And, and also, if you don't have questions now, just uh, just know that we'll be working kind of in an open kitchen along the way, and you'll have plenty of opportunities to ask questions and, and review drafts as we go along. And we'll be talking with you too. So, you know, as, as I know I said a lot and as that information, you know, starts to get absorbed, you know, you'll have plenty of opportunities to weigh in more on what your analytical questions are and things you wanna see highlighted in the assessment. You're on mute. Yeah, sorry, Kevin, I have one question. Uh, yep. In order to address affordability in the housing market, don't you have to have some income data, uh, at least by zip code, if not by neighborhood? Yeah, I would agree with you. So in the demographic place, we'll be looking at um, median household income, but we'll also be cross-tabulating that median household income across different demographic characteristics that would include household types. You know, median income for a family of two is so different from single family parent, for example. We'll be looking at how, um, you know, income varies uh, alongside race, alongside gender identity. And then there are <coughs> metrics that are uh, cost burden metrics that help us to understand, you know, what shares of a population are spending more than 30% of their income on housing. And we will be doing that analysis not just simply at the very top level, but also looking at how different income thresholds have a different cost burden rate, right? Because the, you know the the wealthier a family is, the lower their cost burden is. You know, the less socioeconomically advantaged a household is, the higher their cost burden is. So we will get into those weeds of really trying to see how 
different socioeconomic groups based on different income and poverty levels and access to employment are differentially affected by the limitations of housing that is affordable, available, and of quality. Thank you very much for that answer. Sure. I'm not sure that everyone that's on the call today saw the the draft approach and scope. Um, so we can certainly circulate that after this call and we'll be available to answer any questions that you may have. Um, Tiffany, did you wanna cover any of your high level uh, ideas for community engagement? Uh, I mean, sure. I, I think Kevin has always did a fantastic job um, diving into it, but I, you would do want to say that I think it's the community engagement um, of, you know, my hope is to work very closely with all of you on that piece. Um, you are the connectors of this community and can assist in helping us ensure that we hear from as many residents um, and stakeholders as possible during this effort. And so uh, during the time, you know, and you'll start getting emails from me probably uh, that's, you know, start to think about the variety of organizations both all of you are a part of and represent, but also those organizations that we might, you know, want to think about that can help us write, uh, uh, reach out to uh, new faces of Norwalk or people who don't traditionally get involved in this conversation. Um, and so I we, you know, I can certainly brainstorm different ideas with everyone and then use hopefully your energy to just even just throw me names or thoughts. And then on our end, we can look up those people, those organizations. Sometimes you might serve as the connector for us on that. Um, but the more that we can use, you know, um, outside organizations to sort of spread the word that there's a community engagement effort happening or the survey happening or whatever it might be that we're doing, um, that is where all of you fit in uh, quite nicely. And then the other piece, which can be more fun that I, you know, I, I call it fun, but then again, I do this all the time uh, with Kevin, but it is uh, that we call them pop-up events. And so working with you to pop up literally at some of the upcoming community events or uh, to larger, you know, um, festivals or things that are happening uh, that we can be at and then get again, new faces involved in the conversation regarding housing we could do poster boards where people are just participating actively in it, uh, whatever it is. So um, those are some of the activities that we'll, you know, plan on on doing in the next few months. And a lot of it, you know, hopefully I can do in lockstep with all of you that are on um, this task force. So thank you. Are there any questions for Tiffany? Actually, I have one question. I'm. Kevin might have said this and I completely blanked it. What is the time? Like, when are we looking to, when are you guys looking to like have the final report uh, sort of finalized and finished? Like, what's the what's the arc of this? It's like three months, six months, 12 months. Um, I know it's not a precise science, but just curious the rough arc. We are at this point have a goal of finalizing the plan in the summer of 2024. Um, we are a little bit behind schedule from what we'd originally anticipated um, with the committee getting formulated about a month after what we'd had in our in our schedule. I can actually share my screen. So this is our this is our detailed schedule. <laughs> so I won't I won't read the whole thing. Um, but basically we're we're right here. We're the the kickoff meeting with the committee. Uh, the next step is really to prepare the housing needs assessment um, throughout this, this fall, getting into the housing needs assessment with the community engagement piece, finalizing the housing needs report um, in December and January. And that's when ACARAF then um, takes more of a lead role in, de in defining the values, the goals and objectives based on the the results of the community engagement and housing needs assessment. Um, we'll develop the plan over the winter and spring uh, with the goal of, of finalizing the plan towards the end of spring and early summer, um, finalizing all the documents. Um, as an outsider to all this kind of stuff, um, you know, I'm a big fan of always engaging 
community on what it is that you know we've always developed but this, nobody doubts that there's like thousands of units of affordable housing that need to be built in all different categories of this stuff what's the plan actually meant to do it doesn't actually create any housing is it like a requirement of the state if you're to go to them to get um money for various things relating to affordable housing that you have this plan in place or um you know uh or does it help steve and the various politicians look at zoning districts or changes to effectuate some of this stuff but um you know you could build 5,000 units of affordable housing in New Can in uh, Norwalk at various price points and they'd all fill up. Um, so um, just help me understand why you go through this process. So the first part of your question is it is a state requirement. Uh, a couple of years ago, the state passed a law requiring all Connecticut municipalities to adopt an affordable housing plan. Um, there, the deadline was actually last year. Um, and after the deadline, they prepared a guidance document to uh, you know, outline what needs to be included in that plan. So the current scope of work follows that guidance document and will hit all of the, the points that are required. Um, but what it does do is it gives us an opportunity to identify where Norwalk is today in terms of what, it's, what the demographics are, what the needs are, and it does uh, help align those needs with public policy goals. Um, and how that relates to your zoning. Okay. I mean, at the end of the day, if you said you wanted to build 20,000 units of affordable housing, your assessment may say you only need five, but the other 15 would move there from other towns that haven't built it. So I'm again, I'm like a developer looking and saying, the need's enormous. and. You know, in New Canaan, um, I took over the housing agency because for years they couldn't get anything done. We floated our own bonds. Uh, we, I mean, Steve was part of this with us. We passed a law to put a building permit fee in place that added a, an extra point to the building permit fee that went to the housing agency as an affordable agency. We bypassed the state, who was impossible to deal with, and HUD, who's even worse, um, to you know issue our own bonds and get allocations, tax credits. So we didn't use any public monies in any way um, to build housing. And I may be like, you know, the I'm like this square peg in the round hole, because to me, this is just a need. You've got to, people have got to like uh, execute on this stuff. So I'm more the execution end of this stuff. That's all, I don't mean to sound in any way uh, out of whack, uh, but uh, um, that's all. I mean, you could start tomorrow uh, with, building thousands of units of this stuff if the city and the state were willing to help or the housing agency itself had um, the legal authority to do certain things we did in New Canaan. And, and I haven't heard any talk about, you know, how we're going to actually do some of this stuff, which maybe that's not part of this whole committee. I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm sorry for talking too much. Yeah, I think one thing to, to pick up on that, it, it... There, we have a lot of conversations because Norwalk's adding, a, you know, a pretty steady volume of housing. Um, but the, there's always the question and comments of, uh, is it the right type of housing? Um, are you adding enough affordable housing? Are you meeting all the uh, different groups that need housing? And so, A, you know, as Ashley said, it is a state requirement that we put this plan together. And B, this, you know which I think will be largely a, a data-driven and then public outreach process that guides the decisions. So I think it'll help with our planning and our, you know, 
basically our justification on why some of the things we're doing and proposing it's kind of backs up what we're thinking about okay and and let, let me just jump in because i can't not with that opening you know the the, the norwalk housing authority is already building affordable housing we're closing tomorrow on 69 new units of affordable housing we're um, redeveloping two of our properties. Um, we're going to be building 100 to 150 units of housing. Um, uh, if uh, Sonia Oliver lets me um, at, towards the train station um, in the next few years. So, so we, we are very actively developing, redeveloping. Right. We're using those tools. We're issuing bonds. Um, uh, uh, um, uh, but there's just tremendous need more than right. Right. certainly we can fill and and the more support we can get for these projects, uh, the better, both data um, as well as uh, uh, hearts and minds. Great. By the way, as a citizen of Norwalk, I'm unaware that you guys are doing it. There should be more publicity and stuff about it. I have a My, question. Uh, I have a question. To, tells me that every day. I have a question to Steve. Um, what, Steve, what does the approval process look like? I mean, is, is it your department and and the consultant and this advisory co uh, committee putting the plan together and it's done or is there you know what what are the steps to get to the end of game uh does it involve bringing the plan to the common council um you know just walk me through that sure i think to make it the most effective and give it some teeth would be to follow a similar process we did with like with the waterfront study where you, we actually amend our citywide plan to include this um, as a like a housing document, it's, it's kind of an appendum appendix to the plan, sort of sort of, and then that process would be you know ultimately an approval by the planning and zoning commission, but also a referral out to common council as well. Great, thank thank you for that. I had raised my hand, but I guess I'm just going to jump in and speak. Um, Greg took part of my question. My other part of my question, or I guess concern, is, and I guess this will be done in both the quantitative as well as the community needs assessment level, is the diversity of housing. And so we we often talk in this general terminology of affordable housing. But if we are very um, honest with self, affordable Housing means different things to different people, different um, demographics of people. So I'm hoping that that is going to be able to be pulled out and some of this data collection work that is going to be happening. But I also hope that there is a concerted um, push to really talk about the diversity of what that affordable housing needs to look like. So it does not just look like apartment buildings, that it can look like small units, that it can look like green units, and that there is, um, on the Common Council side, we have had very robust conversations about what does affordable housing ownership look like? Um, is that going to be a part of any of the assessment part of this plan? Nicole, I can address the needs assessment. You, I think parts of your questions are about needs assessment, and then parts of them are perhaps about policy development. So I'll I'll address the needs assessment part of your question, which relates to the degree to which we will be analyzing the variety of housing needs. And yes, that will be part of it. I will be honest in saying that there are some limitations in the data gathering process when you try and classify all types of housing units like you know we will certainly work with the city to get the catalog of all units that are externally funded with affordable housing finance either at the capital or you know at the operating or at the tenant level and you know we'll certainly get an inventory of units to um, from the housing authority and then through the census, we can distinguish between homes that are multifamily, homes that are um, single family homes or two family homes. And we can also take a look at, you know, what have been, what's the variation in rents for, for different types of housing units. Sometimes though, Nicole, I think that getting at the full range of needs is also something that has to come out of the survey process and through the direct community engagement process. 
to uh, fill in some of those holes that aren't always, you know, made available in the data. It's not always clear, for example, you know, whether or not a market rate unit that is um, not supported by some type of affordable housing program is naturally affordable or not. And so that's where it becomes helpful to talk with other folks about what their actual experiences are with price points uh, through the engagement process. Tiff, did you want to add anything about, you know, that piece about to Nicole's question on the needs assessment about addressing, you know, both diverse housing units and diverse users? No, I don't, the only thing I'd add is I think that this just, I mean, again, just following what you're saying is I think this goes back to just the way we're asking our questions too during public sessions, during surveys, during um, all of our round tables. So I, we're, I mean, this is, it's all, to me, this is all on the table. So, <laughs> um, and we'll be part of, of, of what we'll be asking people for sure. I appreciate I what saying, you're saying. No, go I'm ahead. Sorry. I could just add, and I appreciate um, Nicole saying that because she knows how much I pilot on the affordable ownership part and what you just said on what the questions are. Um, and in ownership, because it just the reality is the affordable housing thing is just not affordable here. So we can, I just talked to this about the mayor with housing and trying to see where we can be innovative and new to do things like condos, like co-ops, like townhouses in an affordable situation because there are the needs is making our 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 uh, constituents different taxpayers here, different um because even that like the realities are you put a multifamily who are we talking to the person who owns that and what their situations here is not truly tied to Norwalk. That being said, with the study, on the ask of the question, the intentional about how can we make affordable ownership to strengthen our community, right? And how does that look like? Um, and stop playing on the affordable housing because it's just putting everybody in, you know, a four by, not four by four, but four walls of just cubicle space in a uh, uprising of 300 units. You know, we don't want to do that, like, you know? Yeah. To, to further um, speak on what Diana just mentioned, first of all, the concept is not innovative or new. The complex that I live in was built in 1968 and it was originally built as a um, moderate income complex. And the buy-in was very minimal. It was the same buy-in for, for regardless of what size unit you were, you were purchasing. But the buy-in was made very affordable so that people in a specific income range would be able to buy into something and feel some sense of pride. You know, we're sitting here and we're talking like Norwalk is not over is is in overdrive with this develop all this development that they're doing. Norwalk is in total complete overdrive with all these developments, and all they're putting in is these expensive, expensive apartments. So, I mean, when are we going to stop doing that and start really building? I mean, we're saying we're going to do a needs assessment. Look around at the way the, the city is being changed and you can see where the need is. You know, you're putting in all these units that where the rent is three and $4,000 a month, $2,000 a month. Who can afford that? That is not affordable. You know, Adam is saying that, you know, there's some plans with the housing authority, but is that is that going to target the working class people that can't afford this rent but don't qualify for the assistant housing? I agree with you, Sonia. Uh, you know, and I would just add for the extent of being relevant, we're looking in Florida right now at doing a hundred percent workforce housing plus uh, some affordable stuff, and you can today build. Uh, two to three bedroom single family homes with a little backyard and a, and a driveway and a garage. And you can do them at over 20 units to the acre density. So, you know, you find yourself a, a five to 10 acre piece of land. You don't need to go up and build a uh, three story garden walk up stuff, but you can turn this into higher density single family homes Absolutely. that don't look like, 
you know, uh, manufactured housing at all. Uh, a lot of major architects are working on really interesting designs that fit together like jigsaw puzzles. And whether you rent them or sell them, um, you can, I think, accomplish a lot more of what you're talking about. Nick, go ahead if you had a question. Oh yeah, uh, so Tiffany, quick question for you. On the, the reach out part, is part of the effort to also help inform people that of the needs, it's so obvious to the, those of us on the call, um, but I think for a lot of people, there's a level of, on the one side, let's just say unawareness, on the other side, we'll call it active ignorance. I don't know what you wanna call it, where you, hear the resistance of things of this nature and it just creates a just such a bad uh feeling towards it versus you know yeah. bringing people together that this doesn't have to like people are in this state and this is what it's like to be cost burden in this way and it's it's actually a real problem that we actually have to work together on um so that's just another piece of the puzzle it's getting other people who probably doesn't re don't realize it so viscerally uh, to sort of share in that sort of like need and, and want to help fix to the extent possible. No, no, no. Yeah. And I think actually part of our, um, that housing needs community forum that we plan on doing where, you know, we'll be introducing some of this, you know, what we're talking about here, we'll be diving deeper, obviously, into what Kevin has, is, is going to be looking at sort of the data, the information, sharing that everyone with everyone, and more importantly, you know, one of the things that I, I, I'm hoping we can do is that we tend to focus on the negative, right, of what we need. And I completely understand that because that is the focus and that's why we're doing what we're doing. But it's also getting people to think through the positive impacts of housing to the city and to themselves and yeah, to their community, right? So, and so if we can, if we can somehow bridge that within these forums and within these roundtable events and have both positive dialogue and understand the needs, I think that can build some traction to then towards, again, these policies and, and efforts as we move forward. So that would be my hope, yeah. Maybe Thank you for the question. What would the positive? I'm sorry. I can you repeat that? Ask, what would be those assets that you would try to, um, like you're just saying, the beauty or the good of uh, development, housing projects, and so on? I, what would that be? Um, I don't say that uh, ill intended, but what would those benefits be? Because especially for, in particular scenarios, the project was exactly what it was. It was a project of housing people and putting them in a particular place that we're trying to get our constituents out of. So what would be seen or said? I'm not saying there isn't, I'm just asking, what would be those positives that you would express with housing and the um, affordable? So we, so we could go out there and say it, you know, I just would wanna know what would you say those positives would be? especially with the history of what projects are. I think that, I, I feel, first of all, everyone on here too can add to what I'm about to say, because I think we yeah. all have different ways of yeah, looking at it. I'm not saying it wrong. Yeah. You know, I'm just really, how, what would you there, say it is? I, do, I think there's communities that are looking at housing and, and, and leveraging it into a sustainability type uh, positive conversation, right? A sustainable uh, community, green housing, right? Then so the positives of some of that, I think, looking at housing and linking it to economic development and making sure that we have our workers within our communities and our teachers and our healthcare, you know, um, and the list goes on and on that we can, we can uh, talk about. Um, I think some of the other benefits is that, I, and this is the way I've also looked at this, is that this is a, a and maybe this is not maybe a true benefit, but we as a community always have issues. We've always had something we want to tackle. If we can use housing and and leverage this as a, a large effort to work together, I also think it had the city can use this as a positive as we as we move forward as well. That we collectively as a city have decided that housing is important to us and make that part of our conversation every single day with our community. So that would be 
you know, another effort that we lead within within this. Um, other positives of housing. I mean, Ashley, Kevin, keep let me keep. I can keep going. Let me think some more. I could say Thank one. I think, oh, Corey. <laughs> sorry, a lot of people think that it's it will negatively affect their property values. When in reality, it's usually the opposite because you have more freedom to do more on your land and to have more housing on your land. So it effectively raises your property values a lot of the time. So there's one plus of switching from you know single family housing to multifamily or duplex zoning. And one of the things I think I'm hearing on this call is that, and I guess I was expecting is that there's not a one size fits all approach to affordable housing. Um, it can't just be multifamily housing with inclusionary zoning. That's not going to meet all the needs of the community at large. And I think what we want to gather from the community engagement and the housing needs assessment is what are the other types of housing that would be appropriate for Norwalk and what would meet the needs of your residents? And then how can we turn that into policy goals, objectives? So before, Ashley, I don't know where we're going from here. I just would like to say that I think Kevin and I, just so you're aware, you'll probably be hearing from us next, those that are on this uh, on the Zoom here. Um, Kevin and I like to do little one-on-one -on -one calls and a lot of it has been expressed today, but you're the beginning of that housing needs uh, discussion, right? And so just hearing from all of you talking about this and then we'll also then dive into trying to just facilitate with you ideas regarding other groups, individuals, uh, people we should speak to um, and, and just do that a little bit one-on-one -on -one with you because I think for us, it's a great way of getting to know everybody as well, so. And we'll be reaching out to you too for, for data. Of course, there's data that's easily accessible from the city and the Fed and the state. And then some of you also have access to things that are not published, reports that haven't been published, market studies, which are out there in circulation, contacts with developers who have intelligence. Um, and, and so that's, that's also another piece too of us reaching out to you is the data piece. I think the next step is after this call, we'll follow up with the documents and the schedule that were referenced on this call. We'll send them to Michelle. And then I guess, Michelle, if you could circulate them to the group, because I'm not sure I have everyone's email address. Um, and then, like Tiffany said, we'll be following up to schedule the various stakeholder outreach meetings, as well as if, if you're aware of any uh, upcoming community events that you think would be appropriate for the pop-ups or we can schedule some things specifically just for this group. There aren't any more questions. Um, I think this was a good start and it was great to meet you all. Thanks for setting it up. We're looking well, forward to chatting more. Thank, Thank you, Ashley. Awesome. Thanks, Thank everyone. you. Have a good day, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.